G'day everybody, welcome back to another Ross Reviews where today we are continuing with the long wheelbases and today I have managed to get into a 2015 Holden Caprice V. This is the WN and these things I feel like are the Cadillacs of Australia and today I'm going to find out if they really are because not only do they really share quite a similar logo here, these things, they're big, they're luxurious, V8 up front, rear wheel drive, man, it's pretty Cadillac to me. Now just before we continue with this Caprice V, guys, I do got to say a massive thank you to Next Ride for loaning me this particular car. It is for sale and they are a really cool dealership, so make sure you guys do check them out. A link is in the description below. Yeah, let's get back into this video. Now, it is a little bit confusing when you start looking at these luxury Holdens. Who's the king of the hill here? And I'm pretty confident in saying that this Caprice is the top of the line for Holden in a long wheelbase. I believe the Statesman is the one below the Caprice. And when you're talking like the Calais and stuff, that is basically the same level, but not long wheelbase. So it's more of just the regular sedan. I think that's how it goes. You guys in the comments can correct me if I am wrong. These things did come out from 2013 and they actually ran all the way up until 2017 when unfortunately Holden left us. And these, you can really feel, you know, again, the interior and the dash up here, it is all VF. And it really does look quite nice. You know, uh, the VF, they always nailed it. You know, you've got a flat bottom steering wheel here, just all the leather, the suede, even on the door sides here, it's just nice. It feels like it is a little bit more special, a little bit more premium. And especially in this particular model, you really want that. Now under the bonnet, this particular one has the L77 V8. Naturally aspirated, and it puts out about 260 kilowatts of power and about 517 newton meters to the rear wheels. And all of these vehicles do run a six speed automatic. And although it's not as good as a ZF, it still is not half bad. And you know, the fact that you can still flick it over to the right, you're in sport mode, and you can push it up to go back down a gear and you pull it back to go up a gear, that is exactly how you're supposed to do it. The same in the ZF, big props for doing it that way, correct. Now there was actually another engine option you could actually spec in these Caprices and it was a bit unusual because it was actually a 3.6 liter dedicated LPG V6 and you know that just sounds crazy. But here's the other crazy thing. You know, I'm here in Perth, Western Australia, and we have just a huge amount of natural gas resources here. I don't see why we've gone away from LPG. And to be honest, a dedicated LPG Australian car isn't that bad of a thing. They burn cleaner. You know, the LPG is cheaper and we got plenty of it here. You know what I mean? Like, keep everything in local, keep everything Australian. I really don't know why we've gone away from LPG. It used to be a big thing, now it's gone away. Guys, leave it in the comments. What do you guys think? Should LPG make a comeback? Or uh, is that just a thing of the past and we're going to EVs? Because I think I'd rather LPG than an EV. That's just me though. Now the other funny thing about these engines, right? And we're talking about the L77 V8 now, the one that this car does have. I was reading that apparently before the My15 update, these engines were flex fuel and you could put E85 in them. What? Like, <laughs> leave the comments, start flooding it down below, man. Do you guys actually know if this is legit? Can you actually run E85? on a L77 before the My15 update, because if you can, shoot, that's pretty impressive. Now, just pulling up to this very tight hairpin here, look, this thing is big, and 
you know, we're in sport shift here, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of weight, but you know, it stays relatively flat. <laughs> and man, even for a big girl, this thing can get up and move. Really, when you start getting into the higher RPMs, it loves it. So, yeah, it is actually not that hard to control this car. You know, the steering is light. It's a little bit too light for spirited driving. But, again, this is a luxury car. And, uh, yeah, it's just got muscle car features behind it. And, again, you know, you pull it around. It does stay pretty flat. You still got a pretty nice note out the back. It's nothing crazy, but it still lets you know there's something under the bonnet. Now let's just talk about price here because again, this was one of the top level, you know, luxury hold-ins here. And these things weren't exactly cheap, but Surprisingly enough, they weren't crazy expensive either because brand new, you're gonna be paying about $60,000 before any options. And that actually sounds pretty damn reasonable because if you're gonna go buy uh, a really nice spec SS or something like that, you know, you're basically gonna be paying the same. So the fact that you know, if you want the performance, you can go like that SS route. If you want the luxury, you can go this route and they kind of balance out. So I don't think that was a bad deal, really. On the used market now, these things, they still are pretty affordable and averaging around that thirty dollars to $40,000, depending on case and condition, this is the Cadillac of Australia. I really do because, you know, Cadillacs in general, they're big boats with big engines for less price. So if you're comparing a Cadillac to, you know, a BMW, Mercedes, anything European, the Cadillac is generally always quite a bit cheaper, but still gives you a premium feel that's locally made, let's say. Yes, it's not to the same level as the Europeans, I would say, but it's still a very nice vehicle. And I think this is that. This is locally made here in Australia. It's still even, you know, the fact that the logo is the same and GM is Cadillac, Holden is part of GM, it's obvious to me that that's the influence that Holden was trying to go for. They were trying to go and make something kind of like a Cadillac, but for Australia. And if I'm being real, I think they did a pretty damn good job, at least on this model. You know, obviously this is the last one, the last Caprice, this thing is pretty nice though, I gotta say. You know, the interior, it is feeling pretty nice. It's not European spec, but it is nice. And, you know, the fact that you're getting a V8 rear wheel drive, tons of room in here, tons of nice features. You know, we got heated seats again, we've got the memory seats, the screens in the back, the sunroof, cruise control, heads up display. You know, this keeps going on and on. This thing is loaded. Uh, it's really quite a good deal at $60,000 brand new. And the fact you can buy one for $30,000 now used, it's still a bit of a bargain here. And the one thing that really grinds my gears though, right, since we're comparing this to Cadillac and I really feel like, you know, this is the equivalent for Australia. It just, it's such a shame that Holden HSV is no longer going here because you know, Cadillac is still going strong over in America. They've actually just started pumping some really crazy models out as well. And, you know, if we had the doors still open here, mate, the cars we would have been producing would just be absolutely insane. And HSV in particular, you know, we had the Grange and, and, and vehicles like that, which were just so good. So, so good. And, uh, you know, the fact you were, again, picking those cars up for sub $100,000, that was getting very close to European spec. Now, if you guys are enjoying this type of content, please make sure you guys are going and hitting that big red subscribe button. Hit the like button because, guys, that is how YouTube shares my content. That's how I get paid, how I find other vehicles to show off for you guys. So 
Again, please, if you're enjoying the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, comment down below, just hit the like button. It really, really does help out, guys. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, give this thing an exhaust. Give this thing just a mild tune even. That's all it really needs and far out. This thing is, this thing will hammer. It hammers, man. Alrighty guys, so we are just pulling back up onto another section of road here that should give us enough of a go here. And I'm just gonna reset the drag again. There we go. Build it up a little bit. Not quite as much as last time, but. Jeez. It wants to spin, man. <laughs> Let's have a look at what that time was though. Zero to 100 was done in six seconds flat. And I actually think, you know, again, this thing felt like in first gear, it was trying to spin up. So I really do feel like if you got maybe better tires or you're just on a better road surface and you hooked up more, I, you could be close to, you know, mid fives probably on a really good run. That, that was pretty impressive for a big car. Damn, good job. Now I'm gonna finish the video off here today, guys. So look, a huge thanks once again to Next Ride for loaning me out this particular Holden Caprice V because this is the Cadillac of Australia. And I gotta tell you what, this thing is bloody awesome. It really is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here. We'll see you on that next video. Oh yeah.